The Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 is here and it's got the biggest upgrade we've seen in a while. I've had some early hands-on time and here's everything you need to know. I also got to check out the Z Fold 5, which has more of an incremental update. So we'll briefly touch on that too. Now, the Flip 5 actually weighs exactly the same as the Flip 4 and it's got a similar height and width, but it's now over two millimeters thinner when it's closed compared to the Flip 4 because it finally has a zero gap design. We don't have that big gap that you would usually see. We've got Gorilla Glass Victors 2 on the outside, ultra thin glass on the inside, armor aluminum, water resistance is still here, IPX8. No dust resistance in a device like this, but water resistance is nice to have. And it's available in four different colors, lavender, cream, graphite, and mint. However, there are some exclusive colors available on samsung.com, a blue, a green, a gray, as well as a yellow. Now, if you are interested in buying the Flip 5 or even the Fold 5, then you can use my affiliate link down in the description below for some additional credit, as well as double storage for a limited time in particular regions. Shameless plug there. Now, all the different colors do have a black front, and that is because of the new cover display. This is my favorite thing, and it is much larger and much more usable. So it's a 3.4 inch Super AMOLED 60 Hertz display, and it's up from the tiny 1.9 inch display that we had on the Flip 4. Now 1.9 inches to 3.4 inches might not sound like much, but when you have the different aspect ratio, it covers almost all of the front display. Now, of course, the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra actually extends down to the cameras, and aesthetically, that does look better. I'm not sure how much better it will be functionally. Now, if you do want to see a detailed comparison, Super SAF style of the Z Flip 5 versus the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra, then I will be working on that soon. So do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss it. Now, because of this larger, much more usable cover display, it means you've got much better software features. So you've got graphical clocks, customized images, videos, stylish frames, but more importantly, you'll now be able to see your notifications properly. You can also action them and you've got access to your calendar, weather, messages, and you can also reply to messages now with a full QWERTY keyboard. Now I did try typing on this and it wasn't too bad. Of course, it's not gonna be as good as the full display. But for me personally, if I'm in a hurry, maybe I'm just at the gym and I don't wanna open the Flip 5 fully, I can just quickly reply to some messages on that smaller display. I think this is something that was really missing on the Flip series and I'm glad it's here. There will also be essential widgets such as media control, weather, calendar, timer, stopwatch, voice recorder. I think in particular with media controls, when I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm not really watching, I'm usually listening when it's off to the side, but having those essential controls over there will be really useful in my opinion. And also this will have third party support. So initially we're gonna have Google Finance, Spotify, but there will be more coming. Quick controls such as your sound, brightness, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, aeroplane mode, all accessible from that cover display with always on so you can have glanceable information and of course samsung wallet so you can just use a fingerprint scanner on the side if you do want to make payments again you're not going to have to open up the flip 5 if you don't want to but when you do want to open it you have the main display now this is relatively unchanged it's 6.7 inches dynamic amoled 2x it's got an adaptive refresh rate so you can go all the way up to 120 hertz making everything smooth but it is an LTPO display, which means it can go all the way down to just one hertz, making it more efficient. Great display overall, no complaints from me really. And we have the Infinity O design, so there is the front punch out. Now, the cameras have relatively remained unchanged in terms of the hardware. So the front facing camera is 10 megapixels with an f2.2 aperture. However, this you'll possibly just be using for video calls and things like that. The big advantage of the Flip 5 is the fact that you can use the rear facing cameras as front facing cameras and now they are much more practical because of that larger cover display. So both the primary and ultra wide camera are 12 megapixels. The primary camera does have a new lens, but again, the hardware remains unchanged. But with that larger viewfinder, it just makes it a lot more usable, especially for video. You can record 4K video from those cameras. You can use the ultra wide if you wanna get more people into your shot. If you remember the Oppo Find N2 Flip, 
it would cap out at 1080p if you were using the cover display to record a video. This is not the case with the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Now, the other thing to keep in mind about the cameras is that although we have the same hardware, we do have a new ISP image signal processor with the new chipset. So the Flip 5 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. This is the same that we've got on the Galaxy S23 series. And having used the S23 Ultra for the past few months, I can tell you that it's super smooth and it handles everything that you throw at it. You also also got eight gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, as well as a base of 256 gigabytes of storage going up to 512 gigabytes. Now this is up from the base of 128 gigabytes. And it's also UFS 4.0 storage, which is faster and more efficient. So with the new chipset and the more efficient storage, this should give you better battery life compared to what you had on the Flip 4, although you do have the same 3,700 milliamp hour size battery. I think in addition to that as well, because the cover display is a lot more usable, you'll probably be opening up the Flip 5 a lot less compared to the Flip 4. So this should also help towards the battery life. But for charging, things remain unchanged. So we've got up to 25 watts of fast charging supported. The charger will not be included out of the box. You've got 15 watts of fast wireless charging 2.0 as well as wireless power share so you can charge other devices on the back of the Flip 5. Now as well as all of the software updates we have for the cover display, we do have some improvements for flex mode. So you're going to be able to see more information when you're watching a video or listening to some music such as your thumbnail and title and you also have quick controls. So if you're watching a video, you'll be able to easily skip through and you also now have an adjustable toolbar. So this is gonna give you access to some quick settings as well as being able to use the bottom part of the display as a touchpad with a cursor. I'm not sure how much I'll be using this on the small Flip 5, but I can definitely see myself using it on the Fold 5. Now, software, Samsung has been great with updates and they have promised once again, four years of OS updates on the Flip 5 with five years of security updates, which is absolutely great. And the pricing. So as mentioned, there is no longer a 128 gigabyte version and the Flip 5 will be starting for $1,000 in the US and that is for double the storage. In the UK, it will be starting at 1,050 pounds, but that is equivalent to what we had last year for the 256 gigabyte version of the Flip 4. Now, if you are thinking of buying the Flip 5 or even the Folds 5, you can use my affiliate link down in the description below, and that will give you some additional credit as well as double the storage for a limited time in particular regions. Samsung has also got better trading offers than what we had last year. So again, do check out that affiliate link down in the description below. Now I mentioned the Fold 5. So let's briefly also talk about the Fold 5, which does have more of an incremental update. The main thing being is that now we have that zero gap design finally, which means that it does make it quite a bit thinner, 2.4 millimeters thinner compared to the Fold 4 when it is closed. It's also 10 grams lighter, which makes it a bit more comfortable. We've got a brighter main display. It's of course powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy with a 38% larger vapor chamber, which should make it much better for gaming. There's also an updated flex mode panel with drag and drop features for improved multitasking. And of course you have support for the S Pen with a new case, which is actually 41% slimmer and actually felt a lot more usable compared to what we've had previously. Now it's still got the same size cover display. I generally prefer something wider so I don't have to open up the device as much. So when I'm doing something quick, I can just use the cover display. And I'm very interested to see how it will compare to the Google Pixel Fold. And if you do wanna see a detailed Super SAS style comparison between the Galaxy Fold 5 and the Google Pixel Fold, then do subscribe and hit that bell icon because I will be working on that very soon. What do you think of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 and the Fold 5? Do drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. If you wanna see previous related videos, they'll be linked here and here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV. I'll see you next time.